Now this is my problem. I bought, kept, rented and returned a stupid amount of lenses because I was chasing something, a, a look or, or chasing an idea that I didn't know how to precisely capture. And, and was it within the focal length or the form factor, as in a compact lens or a massive zoom or a prime with a blazing fast aperture? So I keep asking myself if I could have only one lens, which would it be? And do I already own that lens or do I need to go shopping again and just sell all of these and really have one lens, one lens to rule them all? Now, I recently traveled to Rome with the family and to test that desire, I brought just one prime lens and my Sony a7C, and I will be peppering in footage with this combo throughout. So let me know what lens you think this is and, and do you think I'm missing something? So what is the best focal length for vlogging? Is it 24, is it 28, is it 18, is it 20? I don't know, guess what this is. And then I'm hoping at the end, you will tell me which lens to buy next, if in fact I need to. So you don't have to, unless it's right for you, of course. Now, clearly this dilemma bears with it unique conditions, but conditions that I think will help simplify my search and maybe yours too. First, and maybe most importantly, I am talking about a tool strictly to satisfy my own needs, not a client's. This is not for professional use. If I was a wedding photographer, I'd consider the Tamron 35 to 150, 2 to 2.8. Again, if I could only have one lens. And if I was in real estate, I might choose Sony 16 to 35, 2.8, but I am not. And I am also not a portrait photographer where I'd probably pick up Sony's G Master 51.2. And clearly there's other contenders within each of those realms to consider, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want a lens built for my interchangeable full frame camera that almost acts like a fixed focal length lens that's compact for traveling, appropriate for street photography, and can work for vlogging. So one lens to keep attached to my camera when I'm traveling to be able to just pick it up and shoot or flip it around and press record and can fit in a small sling because specifically on this trip, I was also pushing my son in a stroller. So the lighter and the more compact, the better, but that will also give me some separation. Actually, the more, the better, with a fast aperture. And I thought this would be an easier lens to find, or again, do I already have it? Do you, what do you guys use in this scenario? I've been traveling a fair bit of late and can't wait to travel more, but I keep juggling which camera to take with me and which setup. My Sony a7C is usually my first choice because it's so compact, but sometimes I take my GoPro or my ZB-1 or my Sony FX3, and sometimes my phone is my preferred way to capture the day, mostly because the software and its ease of use is undeniable when trying to capture what your eye sees with appropriate exposure for the sky and the foreground with a true to life field of view that fits in your pocket. But again, the look I'm going for is not something my phone can deliver, nor is it easy to describe and probably something that doesn't even exist yet. Whereas I think I'd ideally love a compact full frame autofocus lens, something like a, a 26 1.2, <laughs> but clearly that's not possible maybe ever. But, but then what is the closest to that? So I'm looking for a super fast lens, preferably with an F or T stop of 2.8 or under, and a focal length that I can vlog on that isn't super wide, so it won't distort my face, which I find to be between 24 and 30. And then when I turn the camera around, it has a close to true to life perspective, which for me is something between 28 and 50. Now I have a whole video coming up where I break down the best focal length specifically to vlog with, and my personal preference, which, which may surprise you. Okay, here I am vlogging at a super wide on the GoPro. This is, it says it's a 16, but this looks way wider than a 16. You're obviously not getting any separation because it's an action cam. This looks way too wide. I don't think this is how you want to vlog. Look at the distortion, a little fish eyeness. Okay. Okay, now I'm vlogging on something like a 50 at f.95. You're getting as much separation as you could possibly imagine. Or you're getting as close as you possibly could for a vlog. I've just got my eyes and my mouth in way too close and probably way too much separation as you can't see anything of my environment or where I am, if you can see anything at all if I'm in focus. But this is more of a true to life uh, face. Like this is what my face looks like for better or worse. Um, so there's no distortion. That 50 is pretty accurate. Um, but this is, I need a cross between that 16 and 50 with everything um, completely in focus versus nothing in focus in the background. Um, so yeah, just to show you the two extremes. All right. But I will table that specific consideration as I'm looking really for the best travel lens that can do both vlog and street photography or videography. 
Now this is somewhat of a new consideration as most fixed focal length cameras like the Leicas, Ricos, or the Fujis are really only meant for street photography and which usually range from 28 to 40. Same as our phones in fact, except for the ZV-1 which is meant for vlogging and has a fixed zoom range of 24 to 70 or my Canon bridge camera which has a zoom range of 24 to 840 which if you saw my video for that is insane but that's not really meant for vlogging more for birding and it's it's not that fast and then there's always the kit lens that came with the sony a7c which is a compact zoom of 28 to 60 with a variable aperture of 4 to 5.6 which does not give me the separation I want, but it is really compact and versatile. So it's a way better lens and option that it gets credit for usually, but I do always forget to bring it on my travels, probably because it's not fast enough. While I was in Rome, I also used my drone a lot along with my Sony a7C, but one day I just wanted to take pictures with my phone, the Google Pixel 5 with its ultra wide field of view. Again, because it's so easy to snap a picture with without fussing with my camera settings. But with the phone's computational HDR and low resolution results are its own effect in and of itself. Like I embrace that I'm gonna share a separate photo album on Facebook or wherever that is strictly smartphone pics and labeled as such as I usually will not splice in camera pictures because it's like mixing apples and oranges or, or bananas and amphetamines. And although I will add some of my drone screen grabs because they have similar end results because of a similar size sensor. Yet the rest of my trip, I had my camera out and I was really trying to practice vlogging in public more. And I do think the focal length that I was using was pretty good as I was able to get my face and the Coliseum in in this shot, for example but I wish I had more separation at times. I wish I had that option to stop down and get more bokeh because that is for me more cinematic and more, well, not a smartphone image. Granted, the iPhone 14 is catching up. It is not and may never be as good as non-artificial depth of field look. So have you guessed what lens I was using or, or roughly the set? So I'm at 24 millimeters f 2.8 on my Samyang. So this seems to be pretty much the perfect ideal vlogging focal length for me. What do you think? This is my broken on 24 2.8. It's as small and compact as it gets and I love it, mostly. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you may have known which lens I was talking about because I've traveled quite a bit with it and even pair it with my FX3 a lot, which is a surprise to many because it's also my cheapest lens. But because it's my most compact lens, it's a lens I always keep attached to my camera when it's in my bag. So, so then why am I not satisfied with it? Isn't this tiny 24 just about right? Now, initially I bought Sony's 20 f 1.8, which is a fantastic lens. In fact, I'm shooting on it right now, but I'm using it in crop mode because I prefer 35 when filming my face. But I bought it because I thought it was gonna give me that look that I was searching for with outstanding performance as it's fast, wide, and lightweight. Yet it's not as compact as I'd like, and for me, it's almost too wide. Again, I still don't like how it distorts my face, hence using it in crop mode now. So then I saw Samyang or Rokinon has a 24 1.8, which is a bit smaller, but not by much, and still bigger than I want, but it's a lot lighter and cheaper, and it's a real contender for my next purchase. But then I remember Sony has an old 28 millimeter F2, which is as compact as it gets for an F2. And the difference between a 1.8 and a 2 or a 24 and a 28 is, is pretty negligible. And it's crazy how cheap it is on eBay. So that would seemingly be choice number two as 28 millimeters, one of the most common fixed focal length perspectives and one of the most celebrated street photography focal lengths. And I could probably write a whole dissertation about the usefulness and ubiquity of the 28, but it's interesting how it's really come out of favor of late. Maybe as vlogging and flip out screens are gaining in popularity, the notoriety of the 28 has diminished, as in it's too tight, and I think unduly so. And for me now, if I could manifest a lens from Sony or another third party, it would be for Sony to make a version two of that lens, or even a 28 millimeter 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.8 even. That would be a lot more compact than a 24 with those apertures. So let's make that happen with a virtual prayer circle or something. But, but then what should I do in the interim since that doesn't exist? Well, this is where you come in. So do you think I should stick with my Rokinon 24 2.8 and, and keep traveling with it and just be at peace? Or should I pick up the 24 1.8? 
or should I just get over it and use my 21.8 more? And then there's my last option. Should I pick up that 28 F2 as my one and only travel lens? So let me know what you do and, and what you think I should do. Is 28 really too tight to vlog on? Like I said, I have a video coming out soon with footage from a variety of focal lengths while vlogging to see what is the best lens for that. But I think if I get enough comments regarding which lens I should get over the other, I will just listen to you and get it and do a full review on that. But until then, if you're curious to see what Rokinon 24 2.8 can do on the FX3, watch this video next, as it's crazy what a $200 lens can do on a $4,000 camera. So thank you for your time and attention. Consider following along and subscribing as I have a bunch more videos on the way. Okay, thanks guys, bye.